Plumber Tom, don't forget to check in the comments below for a link where you can find additional resources like practice tests and courses that you can take. Your support helps me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to this presentation from Mathematics for Plumbers and Pipe Fitters. My name is Thomas, and in this presentation, we are going to look at Unit 36, which is 45 degree offsets in parallel. This, once again, is a series of exercises that will help you to be able to install pipes in a way that looks awesome. It takes a little bit of math. But when you know the math, you can nail it. Now, we just came from unit 35, and unit 35 had some significant math in it, didn't it? If you came out of unit 35 wondering if you still want to be a plumber, wondering if it's worth it, if you're going to be able to measure up to the math, please don't let unit 35 slow you down. It's probably the most complex thing we're going to see. Unit 36 is probably going to feel easier after 35. We're going to use a little bit of what we learned from 35, but uh, it's, it's not nearly as complex. I think you'll like it after coming out of Unit 35. So let's check it out. What are 45 offsets in parallel? Hey, do you ever try reading your textbook with enthusiasm? If you're ever struggling to keep your attention on what you're supposed to be reading, just read it out loud with enthusiasm. Let's give it a try. Parallel offsets are used because they are neat in appearance, save space, and allows room for the installation of pipe covering. Two or more pipe assemblies can be installed in parallel or equal spread design. Parallel offsets have parallel angles that are one half the offset angle. In all but a special case, the diagonals are alike. Let me restate that in a different way. Uh, we're going to have a number of pipes that are running parallel to each other. They'll go through a 45 degree offset and we want to keep those completely even on their spacing. That's what this is all about. There is some math we can use to accomplish that and some of the sides are the same here, particularly those diagonals that we use between 45s. Uh, our starting points, ending points are going to be a little bit different to get these to line up, but those diagonals, especially when they're evenly spaced or the same size pipe or whatever, they are the exact same every time. So if you calculate one, then you've calculated them all. It changes in the next unit, 37, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But that's basically how this works. Now, a strategy for accomplishing this is given in that next paragraph, but it basically says that you start with one line. And we've done lots of those, you know, offsets where you just use a couple 45s, calculate the diagonal and get that done. And then from that first one, we'll do a little bit of math to calculate the next one and so on until we have them all lined up and they'll look awesome. So let's give it a try here. We have one sample problem here, and we'll go through this. I think by the time that we're done, you'll have a pretty good feel for what needs to be done on your exercises. This sample problem is going to have us generate six different center-to-center -center measurements. You see the first line, J, K, and L. That'll be our first offset that we figure out. And from that one, we'll figure out the next offset, which is M, N, and O. As you look this over, it's important to note that there are a number of given measurements. And we have to keep all of these in mind. Down the left side, we have an overall length of 43 inches. J is already given to us as 12 inches, so that checks one off of our list. But another really important measurement that we have is across the top, and that's the spread. The spread in this case is eight inches. 
And we're going to use that here in just a minute to calculate the second offset. Also notice down below here for our first offset, J, K, and L, that there is an offset measurement of 15 inches. So that's going to be important as we're calculating. Down below here, you, right next to that 15, you can see the word spread. And that spread is the distance between centers of pipes as they're running along. And we know that already. That's at the top here. That's 8 inches. This diagram points out for us that this alignment of pipe automatically creates a 22 and a half degree triangle. Now think back to unit 35. There may have been times during that unit where you were going, where in the world did you think up that triangle? How do you even know to use a 22 and a half degree triangle? And that's legit. There's probably some things that even in my explanations were just given to you, right? But let me point this out, that when you arrange the pipes in this way and you have an even spread and you're using 45 degree fittings, this automatically happens. It just exists. You create a 22 and a half degree triangle and it's going to happen twice. We'll see it here where they point out at the bottom. It also happens up above here between J and M. And that is going to be important as we're calculating the second offset, M, N, and O. One more note as we're looking at this. On the sample, it gives us three-quarter inch threaded pipe. We are going to calculate the center-to-center -center measurements, and I want to emphasize that is the important thing. I know that you know how to subtract for fittings. I hope you remember to do your fitting allowances and subtract before you make a cut. That's what the end-to-end -end measurements are all about in this book. The important thing I want you to focus on is understanding how to do the center-to-center and how you generate those lengths. That's the key. And then you can go and subtract off the fittings as they ask. They give us that pipe. You know how to do that from past years in this plumbing book where you look up fitting allowances and data tables in the back and deduct. So keep that in mind when you're doing your exercises. Let's focus on center to center. And here we go. All right, let's go down the list here and do the first offset. We want to make sure to get that one locked in. From there, we can calculate the next one. Uh, what we've got here then is J. And J, pretty easy, right? You look there. It is given to us as 12 inches. No problem. Okay, on to K then. You see, K is a diagonal. And as we examine that triangle, once again, we're using 45 degree fittings, so we know what kind of triangle we're dealing with, and we have an offset there that is 15 inches. So we're just going to take that 15 inches, times it by 1.414. 15 times 1.414 is going to give us K equals 21.21 inches. Let's convert that over into sixteenths of an inch. We'll just take our decimal portion of our inches, times that by 16 over 16, what's that going to give us? 0.21 times 16 is going to give us 3.36. I think I'm going to round down and call it 3 sixteenths. So 21 and 3 sixteenths. What does the book say? Oh, good. This time we agree. The book says 21 and 3 sixteenths. Let's do a little bit of figuring to get L. L is going to equal the overall. You see down the side we've got 43 inches. We'll take that 43. We've got to subtract some things. It's just like L is the unknown, right? But we do know a couple things. We know 12 inches. That was J. And there's a distance coming down from 45 to 45. That's K. You know this triangle. Here it is. If one side is 15, then the other side is 15 when we're dealing with 45 degree triangle. So I'm going to put 15 in there, right? L equals 43 minus 12 plus 15 is going to be 
27. So L equals an even 16. All right, we have successfully figured out the offset, the first line. Now we're going to come over and things are going to be a little different. Examine the a diagram there for the sample problem. And please notice that M is actually shorter than J by a little bit. Please also notice that O is longer than L by a little bit. And what we need to figure out is, what is that little bit? What do we need to subtract from J to get M? What do we need to add to L so we can get O? And that's going to take us to our 22 degree triangle. Jump back with me to data table 22. So we introduced this to you in unit 35, and we're going to use that again here in 36. It's going to help us find that difference, the piece that we need to subtract or add as the offsets change. We have the vertical version. Let's go to the horizontal version here. And please note once again that if we have the run, we can find the offset by multiplying by 0 0.414. You are working on this, right? You're blocking that in your mind. You're going to remember this for as long as you're a plumber. Just like you know 1.414, you know how to subtract this difference or add this difference by using 0 0.414. Let me point out that on our diagram, the spread is going to be the same as the run on this triangle. So the spread on these are always going to be given to us. This is how far apart we want our pipes. We can simply take that spread, multiply it by 0 0.414, and it's going to give us that missing piece, the piece that we need to either add or subtract. Boom, there it is. So let's calculate that difference. I'm going to call it D, and D is going to equal the spread. In this case, our spread is 8 inches. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.414. Let's jump down, punch that in the calculator. 8 times 0 0.414 is going to give us the difference of 3.312. Let's work that over into a fraction. These are inches, right? 0.312 of an inch times 16 over 16. We'll see what we end up with. Four point nine nine, pretty close to five, I'd say. So five sixteenths. D is going to equal three and five sixteenths. That is what we're going to add or subtract to figure out what we don't know. Let's give it a try. We'll continue to figure these center to center measurements in order. So let's go to M. To get M, we'll start with J. Right? We had our J. We're going to subtract what we just figured out, which is the difference that was 3 and 5 sixteenths. So m is going to equal 12 minus 3 is 9. We're going to subtract more from that, so we'll have 8 and, let's see, 16 minus 5 is going to be 11. 8 and 11 sixteenths. That is m. Does the book agree? The book agrees. Now what about N? Do we need to do anything for N? Take a close look there. When we're running offsets in parallel like this, and the only thing we're doing is moving center line of pipe over, and we're keeping them even distance from each other as we run these multiple pipes, to accomplish this, our diagonal has to be the exact same. So there's no change here. We figured before, 21 and 3 sixteenths, it stands. It's the same. So on we go to figuring out O. To get O, we'll start with what we know on L. L we calculated as 16 inches. This time, remember, it gets longer by the same amount. So we'll just add 3 and 5 sixteenths to this, and that's going to mean that O equals 
19 and 5 16 There you have it. There's the rest of our lineup on the second offset. Not too bad, right? You've been through worse. You can do this. So there you have it. We have calculated both offsets for J, K, and L, and M, N, and O. We've succeeded in figuring those out. This is the exact same thing you're going to do on your exercises. There are a total of three problems, and they're going to have you run through that. Follow the same process that we did here. Figure out the first offset, and then do some deductions. Figure out your second offset. The third exercise actually has you do three pipes in a row. And please note that the spread between them is different. You'll be refiguring the part that you add or subtract using that 22 and a half degree triangle. You'll be refiguring that when the spread is different. So keep that in mind. Good luck on your exercises. I will see you in unit 37.